Yes. Who out there is ready for the 911 show? Yeah, it's 921, but I don't care. What? Come here. Riley's all riled up. He won't knock it off. Yeah. So I'm here to hang out with my friends and fans and see who wants to play patty cakes for a little while before we go night night. Cause love ain't no crime, baby. <laughs> Studios Black Cherry Jam compilation CD. It's also on my Ambient Blues. Uh, no, it's not on the Ambient Blues. It's in the uh, library of the Bandana Brothers. Let's go to the label. Content. Profile. Yeah, the Bandana Brothers. The Bandana Brothers is a dead band. We are ranked number one on Reverb Nation. Now, how can I rank number one on Reverb Nation with a dead band? Because I went out and I was on the ground in the bars at the events, at the festivals, passing out my flyers. Yes, passing out my flyers. And networking and talking and smiling and shaking hands and kissing babies and kissing asses and oh man, yeah, yeah. That's how I lost so many teeth because I had to kiss so many crusty asses. 
Yeah. Number one, no. We started promoting in uh, 2009. And to this day, my band is number one. I've got uh, 4.4 thousand song plays, 9.7 thousand video plays, 3.2 thousand total fans on Reverb Nation. I'm very proud of that. I did that all by myself. Well, I did have a little bit of help from a girlfriend named Jenny. Yeah. We don't like to talk about Jenny. Yeah. So I'll play another track while I wait and see if my people are going to gather around. This is a song called What I Do. Danny had a lot of stock in this song. It was his song. This is a live attempt at a show, unrehearsed.
was what I do from live show when we did the 2005 <coughs> Memorial Day show for the cops to get a new dog. Um, yeah, Andrew, I'm up in Toledo. I'm right by the casino. The last house on the left, 1972. Leon, I'm not saying it in a while. Fuck Facebook, I got more taste in my dick. <laughs> yeah. Do you tenderize it though, with olive oil, like the chicken? Yeah, chicken, you take it and you, you, you drizzle olive oil all over it and you put it in the fridge overnight. You're supposed to do the same thing with your peanuts. Yeah, I do it every night. And in the morning too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I could sing or not. I suppose I, I got to Okay. So, this is sort of the catch up for everybody. Like, Andrew, don't know about the backstory, but Leon Russell is a huge influence of mine. Um, um, I have a lot of love for, for Leon Russell. I've seen him in concert at, at small bars and, and, and intimate shows. Um, I've got some, uh, I've had some paraphernalia that he signed and things, and uh, some pictures. Well, Krug, Weasel Podowski out there, he's my original fan. He's been with me on the show, with the show now, from the very beginning when I started blithering drunk. Yeah, yeah, with a pipe dream, drunk off my ass. Strung out on painkillers, drinking a fifth of about a half gallon of whiskey a day, and a case of beer. Yeah, so I got started and I did the whole transformation live on Facebook. Yeah, I did that thing, you know. You know how everybody always says, oh, you know, moral compass and be the change and, you know, change yourself if you want to fix the world, you know, because they don't want to pick up their dog shit when you tell them it shouldn't be, you know, on the sidewalk in front of your house. So they tell you to change yourself. Well, I did that right live on Facebook. Yeah, I set, this up to, I set the bar. I did. I left the bar and then I set the bar. And now I go to bars all the time. It doesn't bother me a bit unless I'm socializing with some overly animated drunk person and everybody knows how that is when you're dealing with somebody who's drunk and you're not yeah so Krug and I we go back we got a history from the very beginning and uh, he sent me some very special things we exchanged some things Krug's read my book I sent him a special edition of my book to read and I think he even bought and facilitated for somebody else to be able to read it too, uh, if I remember correctly. But he sent me a picture of Leon Russell. I'm not sure where it's at right now because I'm still getting the treasure room sorted out. Yeah. But Krug and I both shared the alcohol thing. And um, I've been trying to nurture him. And everybody else, of course, anybody who's familiar with the show and what I do, it's kind of a social, uh, humanitarian kind of effort where, you know, I put myself out there and reach out to people and be real with people and socialize with people, interact with people, instead of talking at them through the posts, you know, and hoping people like it and heart it and all that nonsense. You know, I actually get out there in the live feed and mingle with my with my people and the people who are out there. I get trolls and I love dealing with the trolls and put, putting the couch auctions and all that stuff. Oh, I have a blast with it. Everybody thinks I'm a meth head. Anyway, let's see if I can sing Leon Russell My Cricket. I was just thinking about you today And the evening was hefting a mountain But I cannot get through to you Find words to say to you, darling You're so far away Oh no, I'm not crying, these ain't tears in my eyes. 
I'm so happy. I'm dying with laughter. If you'd only come over, I'm sure that you'd see we're not lonesome, my cricket and me. That's a great Leon Russell, my cricket. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely, Andrew, if you're in the area or whatever, yeah, feel free, you're more than welcome. I got, I got all the hospitality and all the, all the accoutrements, yeah. I got some new followers on uh, Twitter, finally, yeah, some people that have been reading my stuff. Oh, I had a very big exciting thing today, uh, went to my blog. I check in with my blog every day. My blog is my fishing pole, and uh, my content is the bait. And I go and I check my trot line on my fishing pole every morning. And this morning I woke up and there was 134 views of my blog, Escaping the Despondent Sea. And I was quite surprised by that because last month I only had 158 views all month long. And this month already, August, in two days, I've got 483 reads with a total of uh, 50,285 reads of my book and my stories and my poems and things. Yeah. And I entered a contest recently to win $15,000. I got $15,000. I could publish the children's stories and, uh, you know, hope to nurture people. You know, if the world doesn't end, you know, in the next 10 years, that is. Yeah. So anyway, I'd like to read one of the poems that I entered for the contest. If you guys want to hear it. My daughter lives in Dayton. You're northwest of Dayton, north of Dayton. I don't get down here much, but you're probably about, you'll probably be about two hours from me. But let's read a poem. Let's read this piece I wrote. This is a very important piece. It's about life right now in America and around the world now because of capitalism and the globalists. <laughs> See, the globalists are the capitalists that want to have their fingers in all the banks around the world. And everybody's, they're, they're preying on everybody's people as consumers. Yeah. That's why everything's global. And Nielsen's ratings is right there at the heart of that. Oh, yeah, they were the culture in the dish that grew the bacteria. Oh, Nielsen's ratings, I've been on your ass and I'm investigating. And the Media Ratings Council. Yeah, you know what the Media Ratings Council is? It's all the household names. Yeah, Huntington Bank, everybody. Didn't see Walmart on the list, though. Anyway, this is about life in America. And um, I'd like to offer you this uh, to consider this to be, um, you know, God's perspective. Yeah. This is called Nature. Let me drink deep on your beauty, my surprise of my days. My eyes drip with your sweetness, sometimes no breath to say. The sugar drips from my cheek and lips, and I enjoy the taste. To love you is pure heaven, and there's not a drop to waste. Walking with you hand in hand, an arm around the hips, in a dream together, hanging on every kiss. Let me drink deep on your beauty while there's so much I want to say, but mostly, only, I love you forever and a day. That's not the poem I wanted to read. No, that's not the poem I wanted to read. It was watching the garden. The garden was the poem I wanted to read.
Now I have to find it and read it. Anyway, I just got back from looking at a Harley Davidson, another Sportster. I want to buy, have one to play with and get roughed in. Let my girl ride it for the summer. And then uh, the whole idea is, is that I'm going to set this bike up for my daughter, Scarlett. Yeah. So this is, this is the piece that I wanted you to consider as, you know, maybe God's perspective or the grandfather in the family, the great-grandfather in the family. Um, and this has to do with America and all of us. This is called Watching the Garden. It's sad to watch the garden die so slowly in a world full of lonely, so easily sold. The pine eggs constant and the booze isn't cold watching the garden die slowly. Yesterday you weren't old, and the stones washed to be seen by rain pit days of old. The race cars in a distance six mile long weed riddled yard pushed the parts in a heap from the mowers broke down. Every rickety truck ride all the way to town to watch the garden die slowly. The oil stain on the ground, all the corn muffins cooling on the breeze, floating out through the yard. Walter Brennan with his stories about family so proud. Every hand was of value, and they all were bound. Not watching the guard and die slow. I'll put these in the links in the comments. What do you hell? Yeah, and Andrew, I, I, I uh, missed part of the deal. Were you talking about hooking up or in the poem I just read? I don't know. It don't matter. Either way is good. Anyway, yeah, so I'm very excited about... Um, Getting so many reads in my blog, I, that, that's that's a big deal to me. I mean, that people are taking interest in it. See, what I have to accept is that what I have to say today is going to affect a few people. But in a hundred years, It'll grow. Look at how many people are reading these famous authors that we read today that wrote these stories a hundred years ago, or, or or even George Orwell just just uh, you know sixty or seventy years ago. Um, it, 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 nobody takes any interest at the time. It's like a seed. See. I offer a lot of parables to people, and, and I've been doing this ever since I did the show, started doing the show. I didn't understand that I was speaking in so many parables. I don't know where it comes from, but I understand it now because I've had a, I've had a divine intervention. Yes, I have. And uh, they want to lock me up and put me in a mental hospital and uh, demand that I, ex and, until I accept the, the label of being schizophrenic. Yeah, so they insist that I'm schizophrenic. And that's because of my investigation with Nielsen Ratings, the Media Ratings Council, my exposés of Kroger three times fraud, fraud three times from Kroger, my bitch about Starbucks, the trash issue, the landfill crisis we have, the ocean crisis, and now we have an atmospheric crisis, is what none of you people understand. You see, when they first measured the atmosphere and they took readings of how much oxygen, how much um, nitrogen, how much carbon dioxide, how much hydrogen, all these elements that make up the air that we breathe. Well, they were all a certain percentage when they first measured it. Okay, like at the before the birth of industrialism. So now, 
since industrialism has had its way with the oil use and and um, you know and then airplanes with all the airplanes flying through the air all the rockets we've been firing to put all those satellites up there we've burnt up our atmosphere okay we can't see it just like you can't see a fart in a room you can't see the air yeah but just like a frog you put in a pot of water and you set the burner on the frog never realizes the water's getting hot it just ends up soup clueless and that's us yes no amount of money is gonna fix the atmospheric damage or the pollution yeah what the, with the chemicals all the drugs that's in the water in the fish even in the honey yeah and they're so devious they said that men's erectile dysfunction medication is turning up in honey so you have to understand you know, the ulterior motive they could have planted that out there's propaganda to influence you to buy the honey thinking your dick's gonna get hard because that's how stupid they think you are as a consumer yes and that's why they want to lock me up. Bunch of... Oh, man. Yes, I'm furious. Furious! Yeah. So what do I want to do now? Do I want to read another piece? You guys want me to read another piece? There's only one person watching. I was hoping to see everybody I tagged, AD and everybody, but I think everybody's mad at me because I went into my turtle shell for so long. Yeah. This is a sexy track called Things You Do. Three minutes, 22 seconds. Let's listen to it. This is Dan Ryder. Every bit of it, Dan DeRider is the reason why I have the show. It's all based on his music. And my personalities, yes. I have multiple personalities. Some I enjoy. Look, look for a piece to read.
and a writer. Things you do. Yeah, great track. Great track. Okay, I still got one viewer, so I'm going to continue on. All right, I've got a few pieces here. Um, picked out to read that might mean something to somebody. And that's the detail I was going to add about about writing or music or anything you're producing. You're planting a seed in the garden of life. And this gets back to my explanation about the parables I always speak in. And I didn't realize that I was speaking in them until somebody told me. But um, the thing is, is life is a garden. You are a plant trying to grow in the soil. And you need good soil. You need good moisture. You need good composting to retain moisture. You need weeds to be out of the way so far, at least so far, so that you can thrive. And you need um, some care so that the pests don't get you. See, life is a garden. And you're, you're tending the garden. And you're trying to tend the soil around you to stimulate the other good plants to grow. Yeah. And like with uh, Van Gogh made the painting, okay? Van Gogh made some paintings and they ended up being worth a bazillion dollars. Well, yeah, because the, the interest in what he was doing grew from the seed that he planted with his art. He didn't make any money at it. He had a loaf of bread one time, some wine, tobacco, you know, and clothes, and, and he barely survived. Yeah, he barely survived. But now, he's a bazillionaire. Yeah, Van Gogh. Okay? Life, you're a, what, you know, life is an oyster. Yeah. And you're an irritant. You call me the big, beautiful pearl. Black pearl. Yes. You can only do that through the vibrations that you create. The little seeds you plant, the little song you wrote, the little poem you wrote. You might not sell it. You can't think about that. Because if you think about money, it affects what you produce. There's no love in it. No, you don't do art for the, for the money. You end up getting money. You get love, you get support, you get taken care of, you get a roof over your head, and you get other people that gather around you that do the same thing, and it continues to grow. Yeah, so, so like with my book, for instance, I'm never going to get famous while I'm living with the book. I'm never going to become a best-selling author, probably. But in 40 years, it may be a best-seller. But you can't let whether or not it's going to happen or the thought of it or... You can't think about the success of it. That's not why you wrote the story. You didn't write the story to become successful. No, you wrote the story because something was in your heart that bothered you, and you had to get it out on paper before you got it out in blood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a piece. This is called Sobriety, Day 519. Today's Day 526. But this is a little piece I wrote about my sobriety and what I've been through in the last two years, year and a half. Um, so this is equal to one year, five months, and four days, 519. And with the bullshit I'm steeped in here in America, that's a monumental feat. There's a picture of a screen, a glass storm door, and it's all burnt up. You can't see it, but in the original post, the picture is of a door blaze that I had to go through to escape a house fire while slithering through the house, dragging a cage and feeling the wall to find the exit. I was far past my limit for holding my breath. In the blackness, in the smoke, the ceiling roared with flames of a dark orange and yellow glow. 
In my mind were spark-flying visions on the edge of breathing and death of two kinds. Hot doorknobs and slab ablaze, desperate for air on the other side of this terrible pain. Wheat grass overgrown, soft horse manure pile, sparks fizzle away, mind sight clears with a smile. The lizard's okay, thirty feet away, the pears are black and it's scorched on one side. Too hot to even hose it down, a passerby stops to watch my house burn to the ground. The truck's in the way for the fireman crowd, crackling timber serenade as I scramble to save what's nearby. The dogs are inside, the horses run scared, already dead from the poisonous air. Soon whisked away in shock and soot to be treated for burns as was needed for good, but the shock was too strong, as I said, no one, no one would, to a young woman offering to bathe me in a fantasy where she was just too young. Boy, was I mad at me and my PTSD. I could have played that hand out, but for God's eyes would see. Sobriety. Yeah, that's a, just a little memoir kind of thing. Who's out there? Is anybody out there? I'll keep reading. Okay, I got another piece. And two more pieces that I wanted to read that, that I think are meaningful. This is called Coolness. And this is something that I wrote while I was in the psychiatric ward. I'm an empath, and I get given messages all the time. Um, sometimes I'm more aware of it than others, but um, I have a, a tendency to wake up and um, be motivated to write, uh, but sometimes, any, anytime between 1.30, 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning, I will wake up and I will write something very interesting, and it's very spiritual. Um, this is called coolness. It has to do with the planet and our ignorance. While staring at a photo of nature, it comes to mind that man has run too long away from what he cannot understand by creating what he can understand. Man cannot disregard God's creation due to the lack of understanding, creating the unnatural with man's own understanding. We're running out of time to clean up the mess. The blanket of earth is the protection of the microbes and nutrients at work within the moist soil. Plunging your hands into the ground covering, whether it's grass or any other plant, you first notice the coolness and the moisture of the plant sweating its juices onto the surface of your skin in the hot summer. Plunge deeper into the loam and roots and again, its coolness cannot be ignored. Global warming is real. We need to create compost and new soil as fast as possible in order to replant the earth before it's too late. We have to repair the atmosphere. The growth on the planet is what creates the atmosphere. It may be too late already, and it is too late in a lot of respects. Look at logging. It opened up the canopies that protected the life in the streams and the rivers, warmed the shallows of the lakes where the fish made their beds for profits. These profits were pennies compared to the value of the trees and the fish that died because the water couldn't stay cold. Long ago in all other continents, trees were stripped for war machines and for fuel to heat homes and to mill metals. They were made into ships for the purposes of capitalistic ventures and for homes while masonry was seen as inconvenient and expensive, not profitable compared to the consumable incomes of their targeted masses. Now wooden goods are garbage. Chipboard, cardboard, OSB, MDF, HDF, sawdust, remanufactured into saleable goods to consumers dumbed down to not know the difference. 
valuable tropical rainforests are being stripped bare in search of gold while exploiting children to do the dangerous labor of working with the mercury to extract the ore from the rich soil. They're wasting the soil, seen as worthless compared to the exploits. Nothing is being replanted. Animals are dying. Housing needs strip the trees away, forcing the animals to migrate, only to be decreased in numbers by starvation and homelessness, leading them to be killed by careless drivers. In the meantime, every rocket launched is another huge piece of our atmosphere being burned up, and the heat wave is just getting started. Wait till Canada gets hit as I was shown in the visions. The whole world is being burnt to a crisp by UV radiation from the sun. It is seen as more profitable to explore space, allocating the finances gleaned from the people, only to leave the people abandoned with the planet awash in garbage. Every urban property has a makeshift landfill on the edge of the woods, out of sight of the house view and road those who at least cared that much to protect their vanity. Everyone is looking for wise investment. Everyone is looking to be cool and to look cool. And the church people, all misled, all ignorant of the reality. No one wanted to be called a tree hugger, the same as no one wanted to be called a nigger lover for supporting what is the right thing to support. But capitalists need the thrashing. The MRC and their rivalry used to discount warnings coming from California. The wise investment is in the earth. Man, on the other hand, needs to shed the ego. Television must be taken over by the people, not being controlled by Nielsen's media group or corporate America, not by the MRC, Media Ratings Council, not by commercialized sports and the Vanity Fair, not by the silence of the churches and the Vatican. I said on April 26th that I will light a fire in the hearts of all men, and I intend to die trying. You want coolness, I'm the man dishing it out. Yes, desk will become flipped over by my hand. If you want coolness, you need the balls and an education. Come and get it by reviewing my content. I've got World War III in my hand. Taking over television and corporate America with hostility if necessary. It's time to raise some organized crime. And I'll die trying. Yeah. Coolness. Yeah, I wrote that at 2 in the morning. Got one last piece here I want to read. This is a very powerful piece. This is a um, very meaningful piece. Um, hopefully it sticks with you. It's very simple. It's easy. It'll stick to your ribs if you care about it. This is called The Fleet. This is another one of those spiritual flashes that come out of my pad. When it comes to thoughts, they can be referred to as fleeting. In fleeting thoughts, it's true. But a captain's log is a fire capturing a fleeting thought or two. Thoughts come in fleets and flit away if you are without a pen. And as a captain, you must always rise to capture all of them. Thoughts come fleeting, and with a fleet, it depends on you. You just never know. When and if the next fleet comes to you. Yeah. It's called the fleet. And then I go on. I don't know. I just wrote that. I don't know where it came from. Anyway, thinking about the nation's thoughts being lost in the winds on a heavily scented wheezes of bong heads. The farmer breakfast, where they berated the farmers, dealing with the public and needed reprimands, but having to candy coat them. Capturing people with smiles and a song and dance is good, but only goes on to a few. 
When you toss in an explicative or seeming insult, they remember a little longer, they talk a little more. Word of mouth gets the attention going with the gossip of the fools, duped by television conditioning and programming, mental masturbation of various aspects of the ego is sold to the sexes. Yes, the babies they created with television, the ones they take the candy from. Yes, you have to have a variety of personalities to appeal to the variety of fickle foolishness, like men who have the sensitivity and maturity level of children to make it impossible to work at all. They refuse to take direction when it's needed. They can't be scrutinized in the least. Just man enough to sell dope and tote a gun, but not man enough to fall in and accept the authorities given. The guy doing the thinking is the one with the game. Intellectual property is the beginning of the command of authority and the distribution of power to associates prepared to produce the effort to make the end product. That means taking orders. The man with the ideas is the man giving the orders. Communities are built on ideas and by the labor of those who believe in the ideas. But growth and ideas are only the birth of people who are dissatisfied with their poverty and your standard of living. You can only drain the neighbors for so long before the neighbors move and leave you in your poverty. Far, far away with their ideas, taking their inspiration or aspirations to a neighborhood where they are welcome and appreciated by grateful people who care. Greed and selfishness destroy everything. Gardens only produce so much and feed so many. The gardens are exhausted and the corporate financial focuses shift to other exploits. People, plants, planets, proposals, prosperous for few. Yes, we've been lied to and deceived by those we entrusted for our very security, our retirements. All suckling the life and the blood from us, always eroding away at our families, our foundations. The children are now helpless, cast out into the forest their elders know little of. There are no books to offer navigation, but my own offerings. And I'm worried, with nowhere to go to be part apart from the conflicts or the controversies, the war. And with no money and only wares to the pro that the program cannot understand to appreciate, I all wait the inevitable, but still hold on to a faith and hope and a dream that I can be useful to help lead those who may follow. Fantasy, though, I know, and my own children practically all ignore me, almost entirely. It grieves me very much, and I'm left without the ability to speak, and it's Christmas. Strong enough to get through the holidays without drinking? No, I'm not too worried about that, but it is a concern. The stress seems to crank up a little higher every time I try. Even though this may very well be the most difficult year for me to end in my life. Oh, the horrors I would rather relive than to live right now, seeing what I see and knowing what I know. This demon force against me is going to be brutal, I just know it. Memories of the supernatural violence make my cheekbones ache just thinking about it. Anticipation, anxious yet calm. I think I can. I think I can. I've always been that little engine that thought it could. Yeah. Anyway, I hope these things that I'm sharing mean something to somebody out there. Um, that's the whole idea. Yeah, see what I'm offering is I'm offering fertilizer in my garden of life. Yeah. Everything you have is fertilizer. Yeah. If I rattled off a song about bitches ain't shit but tits and clit, that poisoned the garden. That's not good fertilizer. Yeah. It's all about the garden of life. We're all tending the garden. And the sooner we all care about the garden, the sooner things can get better. Anyway. I gotta go. I'm crazy old Captain Mad Zack. Crazy like a fox.
Matt Side is mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I do have a bit of a personality disorder. You never know what you're going to get when you get me. Yeah, I always change. I'm like the ocean. Fluid. Just float around. Yeah. It's fun that way. Anyway, I'm going to bed. Yeah, I'm going to bed. Peace, love, you know, who cares? Come see me. You will find something special.